hello everyone in this tutorial video we are going to study about the interference of uh, wheels among the wheels and what is the free surface what is the specific capacity and so many other topics so let us start this video about the interference among the wheels so if we are constructing wheels then there may be scenario that whatever the wheels that we have just excavated round to the confined or unconfined aquifer there might be possible cases that the whatever the radius of influence of one particular wheel is there that may just coincide or interfere with the radius of uh, inter influence of the other wheel so if there is certain type of influence or interaction between the uh, radius of influence of two such wheels then there will be possible consequence on the discharge of the will so in this case of interference upon the will we are mainly going to study about what is the basic uh, result on the discharge so we are we find that if two or more wheels are constructed in such a way that they are near to each other then we found find that their cone of tension they interact obviously and such interference of the will that decreases the discharge of such interfering wheels it means that if we have two such type of wheels and if their radius of uh, influence are interacting with each other then at first their cone of depression will go down and at the same time their individual discharge is also going to go down so muscat has proposed the formula these following formulas if you want to compute the discharge in certain type of cases of where we have interfacing wells so for the confined aquifer or the artesian wells uh, he has given these formula in the first case if we have two artesian identical wells at a distance of b apart then the discharge of the individual wells are given by this formula but if we have three artesian identical wells at a b distance apart each other then we have this formula so we are going to put this formula and then we are going to calculate the discharge of the individual so if we have three artesian identical wells and a distance b apart in a straight line earlier was not in a straight line but this if they are in a straight line then the formula that we are going to use for first well and second well discharge is this and for the second well we are going to use this formula in totality the total discharge will be given by the cumulative discharge of all of these three wells similarly he has also given the uh, formula for the gravity wells or the unconfined aquifers in that case what we have simply have to do let us consider the first case in which we have two identical gravity wells at a distance b apart then we only have to replace hd by d square over 2 and h into hw by h square w over 2 and then we will obtain this formula for two identical gravity wells similarly if we have three identical gravity wells at a distance b apart in a pattern of equilateral triangle then we will use this formula to calculate the discharge of the individual well in an unconfined aquifer similarly uh these were the three cases now we will go to the new topic that is uh, what is free surface curve or the surface of the seepage this type of uh, diagram are i think most of you are quite familiar with it this is the ground level and this is the water table that is indicated by the dotted line and this is the well that we have dicked in round to the impervious layer and this is an example of an unconfined aquifer so this is the original water table that is shown by the dotted line rw is the radius of this well and this is the depth of the draw down over here this is the now this is defined as the free surface curve so next two important things will be what is free surface curve and what is dupitt's curve or the themis base pressure curve so initially what was there it uh, simply means that the simple meaning of the free surface curve would be the the surface that is on which the pressure is equals to the atmospheric pressure take this for granted and whenever it is asked what is free surface you only have to say that the surface which is having a pressure of atmosphere that is basically known as free surface so in this case when we you have dug in the well the free surface it indicated by a b dash c dash and d okay but according to the dupitt's assumption he said that the free surface is a b c and d so according to the dupitt's he said that the free surface would be d 
would be this surface uh, a b c d but according to the earlier assumption we know that the free surface is a b dash c dash and d so there is a discrepancy between both of these things so how we are going to handle that so this what first thing is that why there is a certain kind of discrepancies between both of these things so the major thing is that uh, why this uh, kind of discrepancy arises and what is that surface of seepage also so at first uh, according to the dupitz formula we know that the water level in the pumped well is not found at bc it, as we have seen here this is p dash c dash so according to the dupitz formula he said that the water level will not be at this level why because he assumed that the flow would be radial and horizontal and this is the main reason why he said that the water level is at a b c and d means the water level is at pc because he assumed that water is having horizontal and radial flow but actually it is not that's why the free surface is a b dash c dash and d but he since assumed it to be a horizontal and a radial that's why the free surface is bc the water level is bc therefore the free surface curve would be a b c and d that's why there is discrepancy between both of these things and uh, whatever the uh, and whatever this uh, water free surface curve is there which is proposed by dupit is known as dupit base curve dupit base pressure curve hence this a b c d is known as dupit base pressure curve now next important thing is that what is this surface of seepage as you can see here uh, if i could uh, zoom in there uh, i think it's not working right now okay leave it so so uh, this is the surface of seepage it is indicated by this side as you can see here this is surface of seepage so what is this surface of seepage this is nothing but simply a vertical surface of the ground that is forming outside of this well hole this is well hole and this is surface which is outside this well hole which is exposed between the water surface in the well and the free surface that is known as surface of seepage hence this is the surface between which is between the free surface and the water well that surface is known as surface of seepage simple okay and the difference between the actual and free dupitz pressure curve is as i have already explained because he assumed it to be horizontal and radial flow but it's not actually so that's why it, he has assumed to go a little bit down but actually it is above that is a b dash c dash and t that's why there is a bit of a difference between both of them so that's the main reason behind uh, that free surface of the dupitz and the previous one so if you look into it this uh, was a b dash c dash and d and this is a b c d that was uh, computed by the dupitz that's why it is known as dupitz space pressure curve and that is the actual water table or you can say the free surface okay and um, this is the main figure and since he assumed to be horizontal and radial that's where the table has gone down further next thing is that uh, there is discrepancy as i have already explained and the next thing is that uh, there is a equation of this free surface curve whatever the free surface curve that we have seen that is a b c and d so there is equation for that free surface curve and that free surface curve is represented by this equation okay and where these uh, quantities has been explained what is r that is radius of influence permeability of coefficient k and uh, so on so if you want to just uh, derive have the equation of that free surface you can this use this equation and can determine the unknowns if asked in the examination next important terminology is well loss and uh, specific capacity so what is the difference between both of them and what are the specific meaning of uh, both of those things let us suppose that this is again an example of an unconfined aquifer this is initial water table we have just drawn down a well over here the water table has gone down that is draw down and this is s that is uh, aquifer loss as we have already discussed before and um, this is known as well loss that is c2 into q square okay so now we are going to just see what is the well loss and how it is coming in how that well loss value some value is coming in the 
this case so what is basically well loss that when water is being pumped out of the well if you have any pump system a motor if and that motor is connected to this well so that obviously the water will get pumped out of this well and if that happens there will be a drawdown which is caused by it but there that is the one reason behind of this but there is one other reason why there is drawdown which is because of the axial movement of the water in this well as well as movement of the water in this well through the screens these are the screens which have been wrapped around this well so there is movement of the water through this screen and when it comes in then those waters are been sucked up by this suction power of the pump so this extra loss has been incurred only because of the uh, water which is entering through this and the axial movement so if that happens on a large scale then that is the reason of the well loss and if you want to just calculate its value that will be c2 into q square so uh, as we have already seen the equation of the discharge from the previous slide that it is uh, this equation and where s is known as the actual drawdown so if we just uh, put all this quantity here then you will have this equation let this all quantity to be c1 and then we have left with q hence that s will be c1 into q and this is the s this is the s that is c1 into q this is c1 into q and then we have left with more of the loss and we will just say that to be a c2 into q square hence the total drawdown will be c1q plus c2q square and that c2q square is only the well loss that is c2q square is only the well loss and this is c1q that is caused by the pumping effect okay and that is known that uh, c1q is also known as aquifer loss or formation loss and below of that we have c2q square that is known as well loss hence at one side we have this as an aquifer loss and this is as it is written here this is aquifer loss and or formation loss and this is well loss this is caused by the pumping action and this is caused by the axial movement of water in this well as well as the water coming inside through the screen which have been provided or wrapped around this well okay these two terminology have been clear now next terminology is specific capacity so what is specific capacity this is described as the yield per unit drawdown as you can say yield is q and drawdown is c1 q plus c to q square and hence the specific capacity is if we just subtract q then we have this formula hence this shows that a specific capacity of the well is not constant but decreases as the discharge increases okay because if this increases this will go down so that's for today thank you for watching and the next video we will cover the next topic of hydrology thank you